Welcome to Songwriting with Alec. My name's Alec. I'm a producer and songwriter based in Austin, Texas. As you can see, we're doing a little bit of a refresh. We've brought in an outside editor, and which allows me to focus on this more. I had to check my log, but it's been three weeks since I sat down to do an episode of Songwriting with Alec. When you put something down for three weeks and come back, you're going to feel a little bit of that creative resistance. I didn't feel any nerves at the start of the day. I didn't have any expectations or what the song might turn into. But when it came time to sit down and do the work, I could just feel a little bit of resistance. Ultimately, it, it led to me being 20 minutes late, which isn't the end of the world. But it's good to be mindful of that resistance and to label it. That resistance can be really crushing. It can just ruin your creative drive. So I've had a little bit of break from the songwriting with Alec. We're coming back. I spent some time thinking about what I want to do different, what I want to do the same and just try to understand what's useful to us. One thing I want to try to do better when creating is just to be more free. It's to push past what you think is good enough. It's to try new things fearlessly. To create fearlessly is the ultimate goal. Don't think about looking stupid. Don't worry about if it makes sense. Just make sure the art you're creating has a strong emotional response. That's all we can look for. Whatever you would enjoy consuming as a fan, try to make that. That's the best we can do. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to start on the piano today. We're just looking for some chords that speak to us. I lied. I'm going to pick up the bass. Just find a tempo that speaks to us. Let's lay in a couple different ideas, see if we can arrange them in a nice way. Let's try to add some chords to this, play around. So we started with the bass idea, came out with a framework for it. Now we just added chords to go along with it on the piano. Maybe let's start thinking about some melodies. I'm walking that Step outside, I see you coming through, what should I do? Alright, we're officially cruising, let's keep it moving. Next thing I know, we're cruising in the back of the El Camino. No. How did we phrase that? Next thing I know, we're cruising in the back of the El Camino. That's cool. Next thing I know, we're cruising in the back of the El Camino. Crash my whole life flash before my eyes. Woke up in a dream, I should I could scream, take my hand. I don't know where we are. Let's redo these piano parts to match. We got a, a section done. I don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to go for a quick walk. I think it's really important to build in these breaks. For starters, it's just nice to give yourself a break, to not be doing the thing we've been doing. It's a beautiful day out here, so getting outside is, is just great. But it also serves a lot of good for creativity. Whenever you put yourself in a different environment or a different task than just creating, some magic can happen in that space. And then most importantly, it creates objectivity. It's really easy to get too close to the thing you're making, to not see it clearly. By stepping away regularly, building in some space, you can see what you're doing more clearly. Mm -hmm. 
floating out there. I don't know where we are. I hope I got everything. Count the times. I can't count the times I felt the walls close. I can't count the times I felt the walls close. One chance, here we go. I hope I don't lose control. Stakes haven't been this high. It feels like now or never. Right when I reach the top, I can feel it waking up. You give me that look. I know nothing good ever comes from that. You say let's take a ride. This this might be the end of the song. I'm not sure yet. When you're writing things, it's not always easy to know what you're writing about, which doesn't make a lot of sense to people. I like reading Rick Rubin's creative act a lot. It, it often has inspiring words. And there's a chapter about how a total stranger can listen to your song for two minutes. And after two minutes, they might have a better understanding of the song than you do. Because sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm writing the song. As I listen to this with a blank slate, this song sounds like it's someone's fever dream. Like the, the start, the finish, the waking up. I think this is the journey of someone having a crazy dream. But I think the challenge for this is going to be, how can we make the music? It's me from the future. As we were editing this video, we realized that the footage from day two was corrupted. At first, I was tempted to just scrap the video. Skip the release for this week. No one would really notice. It's not a big deal. And then I remembered my philosophy of trying to keep it real on this channel. I like to show you guys when things don't go right. It's crazy to sit here and act like everything I do goes perfectly well. The truth is, when you're being creative, you got to take these risks. I'd rather show you guys how something went wrong than nothing at all. It applies the mentality of done is better than perfect. So you guys got to see the writing process on day one, where I really outlined the song. On day two, I was just adding some accompanying instruments. So I'm going to walk you guys through the finished product here. And while we're listening to the song, I'll explain some of my production choices, the challenges of the song, and what was going on. I'm going to walk you through this section by section. So what was interesting about this song is that it started on the bass. For me, it's pretty rare that the frame of a song will reveal itself to me on the bass. That bass line just carries for most of the song. One of the unique challenges with this song is that it really doesn't apply to a traditional format. Most songs are verse, bridge, chorus, and then it usually repeats a couple of times, maybe a little bit of variation here and there. This song was interesting because it's one section. It's almost like a really long verse, and it just keeps building and building and building until you get to the end of the song. There's one bridge section in there where it starts to pivot, and then it almost goes a complete other direction. So when the song starts out, it's just the bass. We got the drums, which we're using on Machine, and that's based on a sample of Abbey Road Drummer from Native Instruments. And then the organ we're using is the Arturia VST of the Farfisva organ. This organ's here for the whole song, and it's really just there to add ambience and build tension. So the song starts out, we have the bass, we have the drums, we have the organ, and a little bit of the guitar. With the guitar, since we're building tension through the song, working our way up towards the end, the guitar part's one of the instruments that really achieves that. It comes in just playing one note, then maybe some chords, and after each section, the part grows more and more pronounced. For the guitar, we recorded it through my Vox amp, through the Warm Audio C12, and the only thing I'm adding here is just a little boost at 2500. That's it. So the vocals are about to come in. Let's go ahead and listen. Can't believe my eyes Step outside I see you coming through What should I do? 
Let's go ahead and just solo this vocal real quick. Can't believe my eyes. So we were using the API pre on the way in. I'm doing a little bit of EQ, cutting out some low rumble, a couple boosts at the high end just to help some things poke through. I like to use an 1176 and an LA-2A in series. The 1176 has a kind of quick attack. It's just catching the transients, and the LA-2A is really doing most of the level. Step outside. I see you coming through. And you can hear on this vocal, we got these really loud parts and then these kind of whispery small things. And the last thing on there, we got a little bit of a slap delay coming in, just a mono 60 millisecond delay. But let's keep listening to the song. Pay attention to the guitar. It, it keeps building. The parts keep changing for each section. Again, relying on the instruments to keep adding tension, to keep it interesting. We have a whirly part get added on here, and it's just here to match the bass. Let's listen. So right before we hit this bridge and the song really just changes gears, I pulled out a couple instruments. The Wurlitzer's out and it just offers a little bit of space and I think it makes the listener kind of lean forward. The organ pops out more and you just kind of hear some more things. So we're about to jump into the bridge. I have a doubled vocal in here. Floating out there, I don't know where we are. I can't. All right, now we're about to jump into this next section. This is the last section of the song. This is the, what we've been waiting for. This is the big payoff. So I added a second guitar here. One guitar is being more of a rhythm. The other one's me just going off, having some fun, noodle, and adding some tasteful solos. Let's listen to those solos real quick. And then let's hear the whole thing. I'm sorry I couldn't share the recording process of day two with you guys, but I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. It's important to remember when you're creating, things aren't supposed to go as planned. If you're not in control, you're likely not creating anything exciting.